Hi, oh yeah, Martin here. Thank you for joining me for this week's project video. I hope you're well and you've had fantastic weeks and weekends in your workshops. Uh, now, I'm in, um, I'm in my office at the minute um, editing this week's project video. Um, and when I started editing, I realised that the first bit of um, the video didn't actually record. Uh, so I'm having to sort of improvise this bit. Um, so the the piece that's on the lathe is about 17 and a half, 18 inches in diameter, and it's a piece of gorgeous um, elm burr. So the first few minutes of this aren't actually on the video, I'm afraid. Um, so we're going to pick up the action as I start to um, apply some oil to the back of the piece. Sorry, but anyway, enjoy the project. I think, oh, that camera. I think that has come out absolutely beautifully. I sanded down to uh, 400 and I've blown as much of the dust out of um, all of the, the inclusions and stuff as possible and also as much as I can out of um, the grain. And I'm really pleased with how it's um, turned out. So I'm gonna put um, at least one coat of oil on I'll see how it looks after the first coat and decide whether I'm going to put uh, a second one on. I want to bring out as much of the, uh, the figure on the bottom of the piece as possible. So I'm going to put some Danish oil on. So the oil there, as you can see, is going in and it's really bringing out the figure. And just look at this green line that's running around here. And there's loads of green in the piece around here, which is going to look absolutely fantastic. So I've put the oil on, um, and then I thought the centre of the foot looked, or the centre of the recess looked a little bit boring. So I've just put a little bit of spiralling um, in there, but even that doesn't stand out particularly well. What I've decided to do, and I wasn't going to do this originally, I just wanted it fairly plain, I'm going to put some embellishing wax, some gold embellishing wax, into this little feature down here, the spiraling. And then I'm gonna put, just put it in the grain elsewhere. I don't want it in the, in the inclusions and the deeper figure because this wax isn't a filler. So I will blow it out of there with the compressor. I think it looks all right. Yeah, that works for me. What I'll do in that case is I'll go around the rest of the bottom of the piece with the um, the gold wax and just rub it in to the um, the sort of the plain wood areas. Just to, it's very subtle and it will just highlight. Highlight the grain a little bit. So it's not gonna cover the wood completely. It's not hiding the grain or anything. It's just adding a little bit of extra life to what's already there. Yeah, I like that. Then I can give it a little buff up. And then I can leave that to dry off for a little while before I turn, before I turn the piece round and decide what I'm going to do on the inside. I think I know what I'm going to do, but I'm not entirely certain. So the piece is now reversed in the chuck and I'm ready to plane off the top so I can see what's underneath. So I'm going to use the, the half inch um, gouge again and Slowly take this. Uh, slowly take this down. No need to go too quickly. A 
little bit more. This is a stunning piece of wood. I'm so pleased with this, wow. I'm kind of figuring out in my head what I want to do with it. Um, and some of you are gonna hate it, <laughs> some of you, but hopefully I'll be able to justify my decisions um, as we go through this. I love this area here. This area here is absolutely stunning. I don't like that area particularly. So I'm going to do a very wide rim to keep as much of this on the top as possible. So I'm going to figure out where I want the rim to be. I want to find a position for the bowl area. This top part, or this part here that is currently at the top, I'm gonna do rust. I'm gonna fill these holes so it's a nice smooth surface and then do it rusty. Am I? Hmm. About there. That's where I'm going to start the wall of the bowl. Just make a little line there, whoops. This may all seem a little bit random to you at the moment, but I assure you it's fairly, <laughs> fairly clear in my head. Uh, I'm going to sand the rim down and then move on to um, the next bit. And you'll see why I'm not hollowing out the bowl or the dish area right now. Now the rim has been sanded down to 400 and I need, oops, and I want to fill this area up. With, um, with coffee grind so I get a nice smooth surface round this part of uh, around this part of the piece and uh, I want to keep it on the chuck I want to keep it on the chuck so I can just mount it and remount it as necessary um, and to do that I mean I could do it just as it is there but I'd, I'd like to be able to move it around a little bit um, particularly for the next step and I'll show you why in a minute so I'm going to use um, the woodcut pro mount to hold the piece um, on the lathe. I've only recently got it and this is the first time I've used it, but it looks like a really cool piece of kit and gonna be very, very useful as well. So it's got um, M33 three and a half mil threaded bit there, which goes into the back of the chuck. And then that sits in the mount. And then the mount has got another lock so I can rotate the piece or move the piece forwards and backwards. And then this lever here, I can then turn the piece round as and when I want to. Um, and it's on a stem which fits directly into, uh, into the banjo. Screw that into the back of the chuck. It doesn't have to be very tight. Slide that in there. Let's lower it down a little bit. And now I've got the piece at a nice height that I can work at. So I need... Um, what do I need for this? I need coffee grind um, and some medium CA and some gloves. I just want to fill these holes up with um, coffee grind. So I'll, I'll pour some coffee grind out onto there. So I'm gonna fill the holes with the coffee grind. Bearing in mind that all of this is going to be covered when the glue has gone off. Purely acting as a filler, it's not decorative. Right, I've just found some thin CA, so we'll use, we'll use thin, if I can get the top off it, of course. Right, and then just over each of the areas with the coffee grind in, I'm going to put the CA glue. Just so it binds the coffee grinds into the wood. 
Right, so it's dry, and I'll just sand that off um, by hand. I'm not going to put a coat of oil on this side. I'm just going to go straight in with a sealer and then apply the sealer. Now for this step, I want to mask off the really, really, really pretty part of the piece. So I've got a piece of plastic. I've got a large plastic Ziploc bag and I want to mask off that much of the piece because all of this is going to change. Now that's done, I'm going to use the, um, the rusty paint, the metal effects um, paints on this. And although a lot of, a lot of people who use them don't use the primer, in this instance, I'm going to, because I do want to have as smooth a surface as possible onto which to put the paint. So while I'm doing the primer, let me just talk you through why I'm putting the paint on over the top of this. Um, the simple reason being, let me find a sea sponge. The simple reason being is this area here is really pretty, really, really love that area. And I actually find this area here a little bit distracting. It's, oh, can't open the pot. I actually find this area here a little bit distracting. So I think covering it up will help draw the eye over to this side. And if we don't like it, we can always take it off um, and do it again. Oops, oh dear, <laughs> that might be a little bit too much. Um, so I'll just spread that around. Right, and now I can start with the, um, with the paint if I can get the lid off. So I'm going to start with the iron um, and I might move on to do um, a copper. It's going to need a couple of coats and using a, um, a sea sponge like this is a really good way of putting on an even coat where you don't get um, brush strokes. The iron paint has dried now and it's important that you let the iron paint dry before you put the activator spray on um, because it says so on the instructions. Um, and I'm just going to turn or just tilt the piece slightly towards me, just ever so slightly. Because it is ever so slightly towards me, it's probably not going to run and drip. But if it is, I don't want it dripping on the lathe. Now there is a, um, an, an extra little bit to the uh, pro mount that will allow me to put it onto the bench, but um, I haven't got that set up yet. So I've got the activator spray and just beneath the piece, I'm gonna put a little protective board so it doesn't go on the lathe because this rust activator will rust anything. And then I'm just gonna put a few light sprays on And hopefully, keeping my fingers crossed, the tape there isn't going to um, allow any of the activator through, but I could just mop up a little bit along the edge of it on both sides. 
This is a frustrating bit, I don't like waiting. But I've got to let the, um, I've got to let the paint or the activator work its magic before we move on to the next step. It's Monday morning and as you can see here, the, the iron paint has gone an absolutely fantastic rusty shade of orange. It's very autumnal, perfect for this time of year. Now what I'm going to do next is I want to put on a few coats or a couple of coats of copper paint so, they, so it goes kind of greeny um, to echo the green hopefully that's already in uh, this piece of elm. Now I don't want to hide the rust completely because that's going to look brilliant but I'm just going to dab some of this copper on and then just as before, well not just as before, the, um, the rust, the, the iron paint, sorry, you need to activate when it's dry. The copper you do when it's wet. So that should hopefully be enough. It's Tuesday morning and the copper that I put on the piece has gone off and it's really bold. I've not actually had a massive amount of success with the copper before but that has come out an absolute treat. Now I'm going to take the tape off. I haven't seen this. I've literally just walked in the workshop this morning. I haven't seen it. So let's take that off. Oh, that's certainly very interesting. Now, I'm not brave enough to leave this that bright, so I'm gonna put some oil on it, which will darken it down and make it hopefully a little bit more of a natural match with the other side. Yeah, you can see there straight away that the oil has started to darken the rust, which makes it a little bit more appropriate for the rest of the piece. Uh, today's Saturday and um, the piece has been uh, worked on for just over a week now. So it's really, really about time that I actually finished it properly. Um, so let's get it on uh, on the lathe. I'm going to take it off off the um, the pro mount and get it back on the lathe. It's really really handy to be able to just move the piece from one spindle thread to another. So the so the spindle thread here on the pro mount has been really unbelievably useful. I can just take that off, take that off, and then put the tool rest back in. Now this is the bit where some of you are gonna be absolutely hating it, and others may well be liking it. I'm really happy with the way the, um, the rusty paint, the iron and the copper, have um, have come out really really pleased and it does quite nicely echo the color that's already naturally in the piece let's hollow out the inside and see how it looks getting thin. 
It could be a little bit thicker than um, I think, but I'm going to leave it there um, and sand it down, and then we'll, um, we'll finish it. Monday morning and we're back in the workshop and the oil has cured over the weekend, which I'm really happy about. I did put a couple of extra coats on, um, sort of one each day, Saturday and Sunday, and just let it cure. And now I'm going to do exactly the same to the inside that I did on the outside, which is um, apply some gold embellishing wax into, just into the grain, not into the actual um, features of the wood, but just into um, the grain features and that will bring out a really nice subtle gold shimmer as um, as the piece is looked at and then just a few flecks perhaps on top of the rust maybe oops I'm going to get a um, buffing mop on the drill just to buff that up a little bit. And here's the piece off the lathe. I hope you like it. Um, I'm very pleased with how it's turned out. I love the, uh, the various different metal effects around the edge here. Um, and we can still see the, um, the burr in the elm here. And of course, if you are worried about the, the metal work over here, you can of course always turn it round and see it in all of its glory on the back. Um, this will end up on um, a stand somewhere, probably in that orientation so the metalwork arcs over the top. Um, I'll put a picture up uh, in a second um, but thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, this project and perhaps been inspired to try something similar yourself but down this side of the screen here are some videos I think you may be interested in. Uh, please do like, share and subscribe and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.